What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check 10 wrestlers who totally unprepared for wrestling matches. Now, this is not good. If you're about to go into the squared circle, you need to be prepared for what you're about to do. Kind of need to have an idea what's gonna happen. You don't want to come out, out there unprepared, not knowing what's going on, because that's how injuries potentially can happen so we're going to check out some of these moments where wrestlers they just weren't prepared for the match they were set for appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel link to the original video down below is from what culture wrestling let's get into this one host of reasons, even some of the most professional workers ever to grace a wrestling ring have found themselves feeling a little unready for a bout once the bell finally rings. With everything from last minute changes to not fully healed bodies, planting a seed of doubt in a wrestler's mind beforehand. And while some of these personalities were able to overcome this lack of proper prep, others weren't quite as fortunate. So with all that in mind, I'm Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling and here are 10 wrestlers who totally underprepared for wrestling matches. All Number right. 10, Ric Flair was not hydrated enough to wrestle his last match. 70-something-year-old uh, man wrestling one last match already had disaster written yeah. all over it. However, the event will reveal that not only had Ric Flair injured his foot, but the veteran had also foolishly decided to keep himself purposely dehydrated heading into his last match. Alongside son-in-law Andrade El Idolo opposite Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal, eventually left most just feeling thankful that the nature boy was able to actually walk out of the arena. Yeah. According to the retiring icon, Flair wanted to come into the event at a perfect 220 pounds, and he felt that not hydrating was the best way to achieve that goal. Sure enough, the dehydrated septuagenarian passed out twice over the course of that July 31st, 2022 encounter, Jeez. producing a performance that was routinely difficult to watch. Trying to get into bumping shape at 73 was always going to be a tall order for Flair, but deciding to deprive his decrepit yeah. body of fluids as he hobbled into his final contest no. simply made an already near impossible task that little bit harder to execute. Number nine. The I really wish he didn't do that. <laughs> I, I, I just seen like clips of it, but no, I, I, I for me, is one of those matches I just didn't want to put myself through only because of how much I respect Ric Flair and, you know, what he's done for the business. I just don't want one of his last matches for me to see one of his last matches being done that way, like being, you know, handled that way. Like, nah, I'd rather, I'd rather not. I don't want that to be in my memory bank. You know what I'm saying? So The Undertaker knew he wasn't ready for WrestleMania 33. In what was shaping up to be The Undertaker's final epic battle in the middle of the squared circle, the dead man found himself going one-on-one -on -one with WWE's new Big Dog at Mania 33. But rather than passing the torch with a performance on the same level as some of his prior captivating displays mm -hmm. opposite the likes it was of Shawn Michaels, Taker was well aware heading into the match that he wasn't in the condition needed to truly deliver the goods. On top of the Phenom's hip being in a pretty bad place heading into mm -hmm. the main event contest opposite Roman Reigns, that physical issue meant that the WWE icon couldn't get into proper shape for both his Royal Rumble and Mania showings back in 2017. Feeling he needed to give Reigns that all-important win on the grandest stage, though, a battered taker remained committed to the bout. Yet by the time the dust had settled on his big dog disaster, the legend confessed to only being able to think that he'd stunk the joint out and let a lot of people down. Yeah. It was all forgotten by the time the boneyard yep. strolled into town, though, eh? Mm -hmm. Number 8. Becky Lynch's shoulder still wasn't right heading into War Games. Never being one to shy away from a challenge, Becky Lynch happily accepted the chance to make her 2022 return alongside her fellow babyfaces in a Survivor Series War Games battle mm -hmm. against Damage Control, Rhea Ripley and Nikki Cross. And far from simply coasting through the contest and letting her much more ring-ready teammates put it all on the line for the cause, the man only went and launched herself off the top of the structure yep. <laughs> and threw a table below for the win. However, when talking about that no doubt terrifying spot in the aftermath, Lynch would soon explain that her shoulder wasn't exactly fully healed heading into the high-risk match. Despite it not quote-unquote feeling right, that couldn't stop a defiant Lynch from requesting to put her body on the line in the titular war. But which it's is, safe to say that walking which into- is very impressive. You know, once again, shout out to the, the men and women that will still go out there with nagging injuries just to perform for us. The battleground that is War Games without so much as a tune-up match and a still not entirely recovered separated shoulder definitely held the potential for disaster. It, it was still worse. pretty badass though, right? Yeah. Number seven, Seth Rollins wasn't ready for fiendish red lighting. 
Few fans were prepared for the absolute debacle that eventually unfolded on the night of Hell in Yeesh. a Cell 2019. And neither was one of the unfortunate stars involved in the disastrous main event. Long before Bray Wyatt was putting LA Knight through some pitch black lighting nonsense, the visionary found himself thrust into a scenario that saw him defending his Universal Championship against The Fiend. And it was all played out under a universally despised red lighting filter. Awful. Catching not just folks in attendance and watching around the world off guard, Rollins himself would eventually note in 2020 how he had no idea this was going to go down on the night, claiming that he was unprepared for the change in lighting before warning future Wyatt slash Hell in a Cell opponents that you might have to be prepared for lighting changes. Yeah. He would also explain a few months after the bout itself on WWE backstage that he wasn't exactly a fan of the red lighting, and that it was both a mess and difficult to deal with, especially with not knowing it was going to happen. Red cage plus dumb spooky red lighting equals the worst sort of Hell in a Cell? Who'd have thought it, eh? Yeah, nope. I, I, you know, you kind of need to let your competitors know, hey, or, you know, you you know, yeah, the competitors, you need to let them know, hey, we're just going to change up the lighting, the, you know, the sail and all this other stuff. And, you know, so be be aware of that, because, you know, having red lights in a red cell could kind of be a little bit uh, jarring, especially if you're trying to perform moves that if you don't know or don't see clearly what's going on or your eyes ain't adjusted to it things could go wrong ultimately this match was dog poo you know what i'm saying or dog whatever you want to call it i can't really say it i ain't trying to get in trouble with youtube but you know <laughs> number six daniel cormier completely forgot the extreme rules finish Making your WWE mm. debut can understandably be a little nerve-wracking, and it was that first night anxiety that ultimately paved the way for Daniel Cormier unfortunately finding himself in a situation during Extreme Rules 2022's Fight Pit Battle where he felt somewhat unprepared for his role in the drama. As DC would explain in the wake of his appearance as the referee for Matt Riddle vs Seth Rollins, the nervousness the retired MMA fighter felt backstage beforehand led to him completely forgetting what the ending of the contest actually was. Oh, Thankfully, shit. Cormier was able to get his act together by the end of the fight. Declaring Riddle the victor after DC's <laughs> fellow one-time MMA star tapped out his rival with a triangle choke. But there was definitely a moment there when the longtime WWE fans' nerves threatened to get the better of him on the night. Even two-weight UFC world champions get a bit anxious from time to time, you know? Number five, Kenny yeah, Omega especially could- Especially when you don't, you know, you're not used to this environment, you gotta know the finish and all this other stuff. It can, you can definitely get overwhelmed and forget barely lift weights before his Hangman Page Full Gear Classic. When it comes to Damn. getting their bodies into both visually stunning and all-round physically ready in-ring shape, a great many superstar pro wrestlers opt to hit the gym in search of those vital gains. And while Cody Rhodes perhaps Jeez. went a little too far with the weights in the lead-up to his Hell in a Cell epic with Seth Rollins last year, his former All Elite co-EVP Kenny Omega unfortunately had no choice but to do the complete opposite, heading into another crucial main event war. As Dave Meltzer would eventually report on the back of the cleaner's defeat at the hands of Hangman Page at Full Gear 2021, the former AEW World Champion was actually working that match with next to no strength in his shoulders. Oh, in damn. fact, Omega could reportedly only lift as heavy as the 45 pound bar in the gym before that contest. Whoa. With the elite star telling Dave, I can work a match without my shoulders, of course you can because you're Kenny Bloody Omega. All that being said, Kenny not being able to properly work out and maintain or increase the strength in his shoulders during his preparation for that eventual Hangman Classic only made Omega's eventual five and a half star performance that bit more impressive to behold. That's Number crazy. Four, Dolph Ziggler was well, going out there wrestling and you don't have strength in your shoulders or not enough strength and you still go out there. That's insane. Prepared to become NXT champion. The last thing Dolph Ziggler and most watching on expected 2022 to throw at him was a brief run as NXT's top champion. Yeah, which but that's precisely what went down random. on the March 8th edition of the then 2.0 show. With the WWE veteran earning his first world title strap in almost a decade, as he bested both Tommaso Ciampa and Bron Breaker for the gold. When Ziggler first decided to head on down to Florida to do a little scouting though, the concept of actually going on to hold the brand's top title wasn't exactly something he was ready for. The yeah. former world heavyweight champion would even go as far as to state that it was a big surprise for him, and I cannot tell you how unprepared I was for that. A lot Regardless of, people of whether were. he was ready to take the strap off of Big Bad Bron or not, Ziggler still managed to help execute one of the biggest shocks of the 2.0 era. Before, yeah. you know, Breaker ultimately got the last laugh and banished the show off back into the Monday Night Raw midcard. <laughs> Cody Rhodes had no clue where the hard cam was for his Rumble winning moment. 
Easily ranking as one of the most professional stars you'll find anywhere in the wrestling business at this current moment in time, it's hard to believe that Cody Rhodes is even capable of producing a rookie error at this stage. But that's precisely what went down on the night of arguably his biggest in-ring achievement to date. According to the American Nightmare himself, thanks to the fact that he'd been very much held behind doors on the night of the Royal Rumble, Rhodes wasn't able to walk the arena or ramp or even get into the ring before his epic rumble winning moment. This cardinal sin that Rhodes noted would have irked his father, Dusty, eventually <laughs> resulted in the soon-to-be WrestleMania main eventer not having a clue where the hard cam was on the night. So when it came time to capture the crucial shot of a victorious Rhodes on the back of besting Gunter to win the titular contest, Cody ultimately decided that it was likely the safest bet to just cover all four sides of the ring during his celebrations. Yeah. If in doubt, point it out from every single angle. <laughs> I mean, that's smart because even though people knew Cody, well, they had been, they had been kind of booking it or whatever. They had, you know, have been announcing that he was going to return. So it wasn't a surprise, but I guess they just didn't want him to be seen before then. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we knew he was going to be there. So I don't know. That was kind of weird. They didn't allow him to kind of be out there to kind of scout some things out. Charlotte Flair didn't even pack her gear for her returning SmackDown title win. Another mistake that That's likely wild. falls into the Cardinal Singh category in the world of pro wrestling, a certain 14-time women's world champion 14. learned the hard way, why a performer should always have their wrestling gear prepped and ready to go when showing up at an arena. Few expected to see the Queen suddenly arrive back on the SmackDown scene on the night of December 30th, and even less thought she'd make her return with a Blue Show Women's Championship win over Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair included. And it was that assumption that she wouldn't be asked to throw down in between the ropes on the night that resulted in the soon-to-be champ deciding to leave her wrestling attire at home. Flair only found out she'd be winning the strap when she turned up to the arena that evening, wow. with the last-minute reveal meaning that she had to ask her amazing cleaning lady to drop her gear off. This meant that her outfit only arrived less than an hour before showtime, Damn. something Flair herself would describe as pushing it. Had Flair not been able to get her hands on her outfit in time, though, maybe there was a world where Rousey could have still reigned as the baddest champion on the planet. Flair's reliable cleaning lady had other ideas, though. Number one, That's crazy to know that she didn't even know she was winning it, and then she come on the show, hey, you're winning the title. Huh? That, um, <laughs> that's some great booking. <laughs> Batista wasn't ready for his WrestleMania 21 moment or what came next. Acting as both the closing visual of that year's show of shows and the moment a rising star became a fully-fledged face of the company, Batista's WrestleMania 21 win over Triple H changed everything for the animal. And mm -hmm. that's something Big Dave actually wasn't as prepared for as he likely initially thought. With the eventual Hollywood superstar explaining recently how the entire journey from guy in the background to the guy holding the belt happened rather fast, the Glass Onion and Guardians of the Galaxy sensation who had been personally groomed by the game eventually noticed how he was so unprepared and not at all ready for what was coming my way. Despite many in the business claiming that if you weren't trying to become a world champ, then you were in the wrong industry, Batista was quite happy just holding down a job and never planned on being in the position he ultimately wow. ended up being in on the night of Mania 21. But it was an unexpected reality that eventually set the stage for both an epic WWE main event run and the conquering of the movie business in the years that followed. Keep chasing those dreams, Dave. You're smashing it. And that's that's crazy, Nobody bro. That is crazy. He didn't even expect to be the top guy. He just was happy to have a job. It was never in his mind, like, oh, yeah, I'll be the top guy one day. Like, he wouldn't even think of like that. And it, it just right place at the right time, and it ended up happening for him. Now he's a big time movie star, you know. So, but comment down below. Let me know which one of these, uh, these stories uh surprised you the most when it came to someone being unprepared i think the one that surprised me the most is the the charlotte flair one the fact that she didn't even know she was going to win the match so she had to get someone uh i guess a cleaning lady at her crib to drop off one of her wrestling gear uh one of her wrestling outfits so she can face ronda and win the title because she did not think she was going to win so she never brought her gear that's insane to not to think uh, i'm just here to do my job and i'm probably dip out oh yeah what's good charlie yeah yeah, yeah. uh you winning the title tonight wait what what can can someone told me that before i left that's 
that's crazy but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel road 250k and i'm still in the speed of youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace